Boys Live, the show where we get the latest health and safety gossip from those in the know. Brought to you by Slater and Gordon, this show is fully interactive, so keep your questions coming. Over to you, safety boys. Hello, and uh, welcome uh, on this fine evening to our March webinar um, live show. Uh, we are here in our fantastic new, um, we're calling it the Safety Lounge. Um, this is going to be where we're going to have these from now on. Um, you know, we've got a bit more of a professional setup. We've got a bit more equipment. We can really sort of use these to sort of have a bit of a chat about OHS, you know. Um, before we start, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which we are broadcasting, uh, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I uh, pay my, my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Slow land was stolen, never ceded, always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Uh, I'd also like to thank Slater and Gordon, who uh, you know who provide a lot of support for what we do here at the OHS unit. Um, you know, uh, without them we probably wouldn't be able to do a lot of stuff. So, thank you, Slayer and Gordon. Uh, I'm joined this evening by Harriet Stewart uh, from the We Are Union Women's team here at Trades Hall. Um, we're going to be discussing the issue of gendered violence and how to address that in the workplace. Uh, it's something that has really like risen to prominence in recent years and um, you know we're sort of at that sort of tipping point of where it's going to become a real sort of... Um, workplace issue. So, welcome Harriet. Thank you, Luke. Uh, and hi, OHS reps. Um, I don't know, I know you were talking about it rising to pro you know, prominence. Ro prominence. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're right, rising in prominence. But I don't think gender violence itself has risen in prominence. Sure. Um, I think it's something that's happened for a long time mm -hmm. in workplaces. Um, and it's more that I think what's risen to prominence is women's desire to organise around it and sure. to try and address it and also um, to make it an OHS issue. Yep. Because as we know, OHS reps have the most powerful position on the job. Absolutely. Uh, more powerful than a union organiser, even a union secretary. Absolutely. Um, so if we can address these issues with OHS reps and they can start organising around it, then That's right. the prominence of being able to resolve the issue of gender violence can start getting solved. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, and so, yes, that's what we're going to be discussing uh, this evening. Uh, before we jump into that, we have our regular safety news update. So... Uh, Sam, hit me with the graphic. Safety news. All right, so, uh, yeah, it's been a big big, uh, big couple of weeks in OHS, um, as I'm sure some of you are probably aware. Um, you might have seen a story just from today, actually, um, that uh, a 36-year-old Gold Coast, Gold Coast stonemason has become the first known worker to die from silicosis contracted from artificial stone cutting. Uh, Anthony White, who sort of, he became the face of um, the silicosis crisis uh, and those, that rising level of, of silica dust affecting people's lungs, he passed away on Saturday morning. Um, he was, yeah, like I said, he was 36 years old. Um, and that's just, I mean, it can really only be described as a tragedy. Um, this, uh, this substance, this dust uh, is cutting off uh, you know, 
many, many years of people's lives that they should have stood in front of them. Um, he was working in the industry for about 10 years. Uh, Mr. White was diagnosed with silicosis in November 2017, so not that long ago as you know it seems like a, it's a very fast acting disease uh, he developed a chest infection that wouldn't clear up uh, and then he spoke about the lack uh, you know he really became a champion for the lack of regu re uh, regulation in the industry and urged other tradies to get tested and we owe a lot to the work that he's done in the area and um, you know we're gonna keep up the fight for him and his family and all the other workers that have since been diagnosed with that silicosis um, it's just such a such a huge tragedy um yeah uh, and then a shocking tragedy for the family as well anthony's brother uh has also been diagnosed with silicosis uh, he was also a stonemason uh also working on the gold coast um and he yeah he's still with us but he's also been uh diagnosed with that disease and we can really only imagine what kind of a tragedy that is for the for that family um on a related note, um, Safe Work Australia, they're seeking uh, input, public input, uh, public submissions on their proposed changes to the silica exposure standard uh, for respirable crystalline silica. Um, the draft report on silica recommends a time-weighted average of 0.02 milligrams per meter cubed to pr protect against fibrosis and silicosis. Um, the, yeah, that's actually, uh, we, 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 we think that's quite a good proposal um, and we're going to be submitting uh, our own submission to that um, call out um, and uh, what we want from people watching as well is uh, if you're able to um, we'll put the link to the petition that we're running we've gathered over a thousand signatures in uh, in the last couple of weeks um, and we want to put that forward to Safe Work Australia as part of that submission process um, so get on to that uh, sign it and we can really send a strong message um, there have so far been uh, nine deaths in Victoria this year, um, the most recent of which was a, a man in, uh, in a, oh, pardon me, uh, just outside of Clinton, uh, who was a 60-year-old 60, 60 man uh, thrown from the back of a horse uh, who was breaking in on a road, uh, on the side of a road last month. Oh. Do you like a sip of my tea? Uh, I'm okay, thank you, I've got my own. Um, and, uh, yeah, and... Um, that's sort of really a, a large part of the reason why um, that we're campaigning for industrial manslaughter laws and we'll keep you up the, updated with that campaign uh, as it develops. Um, recent Australian research has confirmed that sexism damages women's mental health. Uh, which, I mean, you know, water is wet, like, of course it does. <laughs> um, and that's sort of a large part of why we're here to talk about gender violence today. Um, but the research, it was published in the Journal of uh, Applied Social Psychology, uh, investigated the associations between workplace sexism, sense of belonging, mental health, job satisfaction for women in male-dominated industries. Um, there were 190 women, all members of a large Australian trade union that re represents workers in mainly male-dominated jobs, found that organisational sexism and interpersonal sexism were associated with a poorer center, sense of belonging in the industry, which was associated with poorer mental health. Um, and again, this is, uh, you know, it's good to have the numbers to back this up and the statistics and the, and the research to back this up, but I think that's something that a lot of us know anecdotally and intuitively. Um, and finally, it's rally time. Um, and it's going to be a big one. Uh, a lot of you probably have come along to our last couple of rallies. Um, uh, in sort of the, in the lead up to uh, the state election last year, um, but this one's going to be even bigger. So put this in your diaries. Wednesday, the tenth of April, um, we're going to be out there. We're going to be up there for changing the rules campaign um, to keep that uh, campaign up and running. Uh, this is a chance to show them uh, to show the government and uh, and business and lobby groups and all these sorts of people. Uh, what's important. Um, so we're standing up for job security, equal rights for people working in the gig economy, investment in, appre in, in apprentices and vocational training, a decent living wage, respect for women at work, restoring penalty rates, and the end of wage theft. So see you all there, uh, Wednesday the 10th, and uh, yes, we'll keep updates about that coming, and uh, you will not miss it, I can guarantee. So that's the news. Uh, and now we can get on to the discussion. Um, so, gendered violence. Mm. Harriet, you're a woman. What's up with that? 
Well, a question like that, since we're in the workplace, might be considered gendered violence. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I might actually read out the description of yes. what gendered violence is first, and then oh, you can ask me some questions that it might provoke. Can I ask some really condescending questions? <laughs> Preferably not. Preferably <laughs> not, Luke. <laughs> um, but you can try your luck. Yeah, good. So, gendered violence is any behaviour, action, no. system or structure that causes physical, sexual, psychological or economic harm to a worker because of their sex, gender, sexual orientation, or because they do not adhere to dominant gender stereotypes or socially prescribed gender roles. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the people that it's about, a lot of the time, especially because I organise in the women's team, they say, well, you know, gender violence, it's about women. Yeah. But um, we don't just talk about women. No. It is people that don't conform to their gender. So that could be... Perhaps someone that is a man who acts effeminately or a woman who um, acts masculinely or someone who doesn't conform to their gender in any mm -hmm. type of way or a, maybe a man that acts uh, more masculinely and, and it's, you know, it's generally, sure. we talk about, it's because of somebody's mm -hmm. gender yeah. and a lot of the time it can be because somebody's in the LGBTIQ community mm -hmm. as well yeah. um, that they experience um, gender violence. Sure. And that's the sort of, um, I guess that's the, that's the crucial point is that um, that's that it's as a result of that aspect of that person's uh, identity. So yep. um, it's not just sort of, um, you know, we're going to get into this later. There's a dis um, you know a distinction between um, you know the way someone treats you at work and also the sort of reasoning. Or the the not the reasoning because there is no reasoning behind it, but there's sort of how people treat you at work and then why they do it, and it's sort of that balance. You know what I mean, or that distinction? Hmm. Yeah. I think I know what you're getting at, uh -huh. <laughs> um, which is that. So what you're saying is is that society and the workplace reflect each other in terms of yeah but also how that behavior like you know there's uh, there's like like we were talking about earlier there's a difference between somebody who's just a jerk and oh, somebody right. who's engaging in gender violence absolutely and and we have cuz anyone who's you're all OHS reps who are watching this and you will know that there are provisions there in terms of harassment and it's widely accepted now that um, if someone's being bullied or intimidated um, systematically bullied in a workplace that there's going to be psychological and mm -hmm. even physical effects on that person. Sure. That's not disputed. No. That, that, that there's A, a hazard and B, that there's harm. Yeah. Um, but the difference with gender violence is that I might turn around and be a jerk to you mm -hmm. and like really every day come and harass you and mm -hmm. it could well be and there's a good chance that I'm just doing it because I'm a bully. Yeah. Um, and my workplace is, of course, the systems of my work is allowing for a bully, mm -hmm. and that is a problem, of course, it needs to be addressed. Yeah. But it's when the f it's because of the person's gender that yeah. makes a difference. That's right. Um, and so if I'm coming and continuously doing this to you, and it's because you are wearing nail polish and defying gender norms, um, and you know it, mm -hmm. but you can't really prove it, and a lot of this stuff is... is and we're going to get into trying to sort of work out how OHS reps can organise around this stuff. Yeah. But a lot of this stuff can be that you walk away and you go, it feels like this is because of my gender. Sure. I don't necessarily have to turn around and say something directly derogative about your appearance or yeah. your manner or yeah, your yeah, demeanour yeah. yeah. for you to go, something about this doesn't feel... It feels like it's not just because that person's a jerk. Sure. It feels like there's a prejudice there. Sure. Yeah. Um, and that's the stuff that we've got to try and address, I guess, because, as you know, in wider society, it's sort of been accepted that um, there's cultural problems in our society that can lead to male violence. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, a lot of the time people are at work. So... Somebody who's even perpetrating violence outside of the work are people that we're working with. Yes. And there's a high chance that someone who perpetu who's a perpetrator of um, gender violence or sexist behaviour will be doing it in the workplace. Absolutely. And that 
that's what we need to start addressing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, and also, um, uh, there's, there is quite a distinction between gendered violence and sexual harassment as well, isn't that right? Yes, and this, the movement of gendered violence, it's not just something that we came up with here up yep. in our new fancy studio. It's actually an international... We're coming up with a lot of great new ideas in this studio, but this is not one <laughs> of them. This is not one of them. No. Um, but it is an international... Um, an internationally recognised yep. term, gendered violence. That's right. The, IR, the ILO yep. recently put out a, a, um, a statement regarding it. Is that yes, right? yep. yes, they have. Um, and there's also an inquiry into sexual harassment that the women's team here at Trades Hall are pushing... Well, the whole of Trades Hall... Yep. Um, has um, been part of the discussions of, and that's about the fact that gen sexual harassment, although is a form of gendered violence, it's part of a greater yep. umbrella sure. of behaviour that happens. Yep. Because there is this sort of 80s, 90s sort of cartoonish idea mm. that the only thing wrong you can do in your workplace is pinch someone's bum yep. and maybe tell them that they're pretty when they're not in the mood for it. That's right. And it's something... I'm seeing, I'm having visions mm. of those, like, don't sexually harass people, like, instructional videos. Yeah. Of, like, like, a man in a suit who's like, hey, you're looking pretty good. And then... But, like, it's not, it's not just no, that. Like, it's... You know, it's that's not. very, uh, like, as you say, cartoonish versions of that. But yeah. it can also uh, oftentimes be a lot more subtle, but just as damaging. It can be... And it, and it is... Um, there is a large... Umbrella, and it can start with these sort of innuendos or put downs, but also it can be more subtle behaviour of making it so that a workplace structure allows for sexist behaviour. Mm -hmm. So they only employ women for mm -hmm. administrative roles, mm. that they only employ men in managerial roles, mm. and so already the power balance is put off there. Mm -hmm. And so there's the subtleties of that that fall under gender violence, but also our NUW. Um, comrades who have been organising farm workers have um, there's have members and workers working in the farms that have experienced sexual assault and rape in the workplace. So that you wouldn't call sexual harassment, no, would you? No. And you also um, aren't allowing for the fact that gender non-conforming people or, or men uh, can be included inside this sure. gender. I mean, the the key thing here is is that it's happening because of gender, yeah. Um, and how we can organise it because the truth is, you can't change any of this stuff until you start looking at the structures of how we're working. That's right. AKA, you know, identifying the hazards, yes. which can be these structures that yes. we can actually start to sort of change some of this behaviour. Yes, absolutely. Mm. And that's sort of what we're here to talk about today as well. Is that like, um, you know. Um, it, it, we've got a, you know, the, we've got some common examples here of, uh, you know, I, behavior that um, would constitute gendered violence. So, you know, things like stalking, intimidation, verbal abuse, rude gestures, offensive language and imagery, sexual harassment, as we've just talked about, uh, physical assault, including sexual assault and rape, um, put downs, innuendo, insinuations, ostracism and exclusion, or being undermined in your work position. Now, those are all. Bad on your things. resume. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, what? Keep going, keep going. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so those are all bad things to do to a person. Yeah. But the reason we, um, you know, like, the reason we don't have, like, a don't stalk people policy, uh, well, I mean, we should have a don't stalk people policy, but... I think the it's reason, a given, I probably. Mean, yes, that's yeah. right. But, like, the reason we put it all under gendered violence is to sort of highlight that underlying... The underlying issue, which is the gendered nature of it, and yep. so that then that can be addressed rather than being like, oh, we don't want people stalking people, so let's just make sure they don't find out where they live. Like that's a, mm. but rather than just being like that sort of band aid approach, it's that un those underlying attitudes that need to be, well, like the attitudes and the, the systems that allow it to propagate. Those yep. are the things that need to be addressed rather than just, oh, let's stop. Let's just take down all the offensive imagery in the workplace. I mean, that's a good start, but it's not addressing mm. the root cause of the problem. No, yep, and that's really important, that it's that it's the behaviour rather than the individual thing yes. a lot of the time that we're trying to... Yes. Um, ..trying to solve there. Um, can I, before we move on, I think it's... I, there's a question that comes up in our training mm -hmm. that we do 
um, a lot. And that's people saying, why violence? Sure. You know? Um, no one's drawn blood. Mm -hmm. um, not giving somebody a promotion because they're a woman doesn't um, sure. put them in the hospital yep. necessarily. You yeah. know? So, so people struggle with this idea of why it's called violence. And the yeah. reason that this international movement, I guess, came about was to try and make people understand that there are physical and psychological harms that come from mm -hmm. from it yeah um and that those harms which of course can be physical yeah it can be a physical harm and those those do happen yeah. um and that they they also can have the effects of people getting anxiety mm -hmm. depression suicidal thoughts suicide yeah hospitalized we all know this effects of stress can lead to mm -hmm. stomach ulcers hair falling out you know like the myriad of sickness yeah. and harm that can come from stress yeah, um it's huge but also the, obviously spanning right through to actually people being physically in danger mm -hmm. because they are um is a statistic which will probably be quite mind-blowing to you and OHS reps who are watching this, which is when we went out and we did a survey on during, during these visits on hundreds and hundreds of Victorian working women, because this, this women's team that we have now has been working since 2016 and, mm -hmm. and gathering the information. And out of it, 19%. So that's almost one in five people, yeah. s women, said that they had left a job because they didn't feel safe. Wow. So like, if you think about if there was a machine and you said you were in a workplace and 20% of the people had left because that machine, they thought that they were gonna end up chopping their finger off or losing, an, you know, losing a hand or yeah. losing a foot, you would go, by crikey. Yeah. Safety boys would be putting on their safety jackets and jogging down shutting there it down. oh you'd be shutting it down yeah and so you know like the effects are clearly that if somebody feels that um at risk sure i for on i honestly thought you were about to say when you said that 19 percent uh, you know i thought the the end of that sentence was going to be 19 percent of women had experienced gender violence in the workplace no. obviously no. that's quite low the and, I, is high and high I and like in the back of my mind like i know that's not true because i know it is much higher mm. but i thought that's where you were going with that but i was like oh they've actually physically left a job yep. physically like, left a job and that's a huge decision to have to make and that's yep. a huge lifestyle change and, like, and that wasn't no just one does because that lightly. it wasn't just because it was like the question wasn't as you left because it was annoying or you thought another job mm. would have it better you know like it was literally because you felt at risk yeah you know and um what, however that was, I mean, yeah. it's it's a huge risk yeah. and we needed to be dealing with it. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Um, are there common, well, so yeah, I mean, Sam, have we had any, uh, any uh, anyone typing in to us yet? Because my next question is that like, I mean, I can understand it might be quite confronting to sort of type your experience in, into a, uh, you know, into a, comment section on a Facebook video but I mean the next part we want to do is you know really tangible ways that this comes up in people's workplaces that they might not have identified as gender violence in the past we've mentioned a couple already Sam has anybody written in any any questions or uh, I think everyone is just listening and learning right now mm -hmm. um, we've got a fair chunk of people watching but everyone's just taking it all in at the nice. moment I think, all right, cool. well, look, I guess, as I should have probably mentioned this up the top uh, I, I, I normally do but I, I feel like we're at a point now people know us people know they can type in whenever they feel like it um, please let us know uh, if you have any questions if you have any experiences that you want to share uh, let us know and uh, like I said it can obviously be quite confronting with obviously such a sensitive topic as well so obviously always please um, feel free like you can contact us offline uh, actually I do had some uh, there was some information I was supposed to read up at the top of the, the top of the program as well I think maybe do you want it maybe safety Sam can put this up and show yeah can you uh, zoom in on that um, yeah. just if this uh, if this topic is quite um, you know confronting yeah, it for can you. be confronting yeah of course of course, of course. 
Um, so yeah, this got some we got some numbers here. One hundred respect. Um, you know, if your workplace has a as an employee assistance program, um, as we are fortunate mm. enough to have here, um, the Center Against Sexual Assault is there. They've got their website there. It was at casa.org.au, mm. and then uh, your union as well. Um, you're always free. Feel free to. Um, you, know, you should always feel like you should con you can contact your union, uh, and then as well, it's not on there, but you know, contact us as well if you need to. Um, and and also the women's team. And the women's team. We also have a gendered violence two day training program coming up on the twenty fourth and twenty fifth of this month. So if you are interested, contact your union and tell them places, to send you along. Places still yeah, there are there yep. are places still okay, available. Great. Cool. Um, and that's for uh, is that for OHS reps or is that for delegates or is that just for anyone? Anybody? That's yep. anybody. Okay, cool. So, yeah. just for, so basically you're just about addressing the issue in the workplace yep. and, and recognising it. Absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, cool. So, yeah, I mean, we've covered, a, yeah, is there any other sort of common ways that this manifests that we haven't really... Well, there is an interesting thing in that people don't think about the fact that we all work and socialise quite differently now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the gender violence that and stories that we hear involve people experiencing gender violence outside of work but by people who they work with sure yeah. so there's a lot of like social media sure facebook yeah. instagram well it's not just well, that, no, no, but it's yeah but, but obviously used for that but yeah. also privately messaging people sure um and when you have somebody who's maybe um i was working recently with our young workers center mm -hmm. and there was a young person who was working in a very vulnerable sort of casual job, young woman, and the manager, of course, st starts inst like sending instant messages through Facebook oh, or yeah. whatever, direct messaging, private messaging, and trying to invite her for drinks. She doesn't mm -hmm. feel comfortable, but sure. she worries about losing her shift. Sure. Um, then when she goes there, he, you know, tries to make out with her. Yeah. She's sort of horrified. Uh, rejects him and then gets her shifts cut yeah. but is in no position because of the casual nature of her job and of course this leads to um, her losing that work and of mm -hmm. course losing confidence because mm -hmm. she's you know 17 and you know like so a lot of the time the way that people can get to people um, is through social media yeah. because it really blues the public and private lives yeah, of, of people these days yeah. Um, and also a lot of people don't get confused about whether they're experiencing gender violence mm -hmm. um, because especially in Australian culture, we all go, oh, we're just having a laugh, oh, we're just yeah, having just a having beer, a yeah, we're yeah, just yeah, all yeah. going yeah. here and this and that. And by no means do I want, want You tell people, people that they can't have fun anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And no one wants to be a killjoy. And obviously people are naturally going to make friendships. You're with your yeah. workmates more than your family. You know, you spend eight hours a day or however long a day you work with them. And a lot of the time, so naturally relationships are built. And by no means are we t trying to use gendered violence to squelch people. Squelch? <laughs> squelch? Squash? Yeah. Sorry, go on. <laughs> Squilch a word, sir. Can you Google that? Uh, squilch? Yeah. squilch? Yeah, one moment, gang. Yeah. Keep chatting. <laughs> He's on the ball <laughs> about whether <laughs> squilch. <laughs> Weigh in in the comments. Squilch. Yeah. Is it a word? <laughs> no. um, okay. Well, hold on, hold on. Don't go away yet. Squilch is a word, but only in the Urban Dictionary, as far as I can see. Are you able to read Urban um, Dictionary? To Sam, download a torrent of something using Squilch it, which I don't know if I agree with. I feel like there's got to be a different no, one. Uh, and there's also a really rude one that I'm not going to read out. So I'm going to cut. Uh, I'm going to get back to you, gang. Thanks for that one. <laughs> so squash. That's um, <laughs> what we're talking about. How are we using it in a sentence? Yeah, you, well, how are you going to use it? Yeah. Well, you were saying that by no means are you trying to. Oh, am I trying to squelch people having? You know, I'm not trying to squelch anyone having, having fun. Fun and having interpersonal yeah. relationships. Sorry, gang. I think you mean squelch. Squelch. I think that's what you're. I think she means squash. Well, squelch no, would. Squelch. I think it's squelch. A squelch is, you know what? <laughs> We're learning. We are learning. We're all, We're all learning, learning today. Together. Yeah, I, th I think you might be thinking about squelch, but also 
Um, we're not totally on the money, so... It's more than noise. It makes when you squish something. Yeah. So... And, like, when I'm trying to have fun and you come in and you're, like, squelch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, what we were saying anyway. is I love squ squashing people's... What we're talking about? <laughs> Diesel fumes? Silica? Something? I don't know. Yeah. So... That's obviously not what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. What we do want to do, though, is try and, A, recognise some of this behaviour for what it is, which mm -hmm. is gendered violence, and, B, organise it within the OHS framework. Yes. Because what we're seeing here is hazards yes. for women and non-gender conforming people. That's right. And harm. Yes. And the harm... Is having some can have some quite serious effects. Absolutely, and uh, you know, to that point, I guess that's sort of leading us on to. Oh man, that tea is. Um, sort of the the reason why we're here and why we, as the OHS team, are mm. sort of doing this as a webinar is um, we do really want to focus in on it as a OHS issue. Mm -hmm. Um. There's a lot of different ways that, you know, gendered violence in society can be addressed or the way that, ways that we can talk about it or lenses that we can... Oh, we've got a question? Is it... What, what's up? Uh, yep, we got one question coming in here. So I'll just read it verbatim and you can uh, you can comment. Um, interesting is, to hear what you think. Is someone telling me that squishes? No, this is not related to squishing, squelching or squashing. Yeah. Um, we have question. Uh, what about th those who work in places like the infamous Honeybird Debt? Uh, lingerie store where men buy things for their girlfriends, etc. Almost formalised gendered violence? Question mm, mark. That was a well, big one. That well, a... clearly we didn't think it was formalised gender violence, and that there was a huge campaign that was run out of mm. um, trades hall supporting the Honey Burdette, um workers. Mm. I think though, you know, it's not like we. I don't think that we are the police for. Uh, saying that people don't want to buy lingerie. But if people are going to be in that, what we don't want is people to be exposed to dangerous situations. Yes, of course. Because, you know, dangerous situations were coming out of there. There was a handbook that was put out by the Honey Burdette really? bosses that were like answers about, like sexy answers for... Sexy answers to unwanted questions. Exactly. Um, so you had to, like they literally gave you uh, ways of dealing with sexual harassment by flirting sure. and encouraging giggling, it. I imagine. And the, yeah. using your body to basically try and entice mm. people into buying more products, etc. Cool. But of course there was reoccurring people. People got followed to their cars. Yeah. So... What was the original question was about whether we think that was structured gendered violence? Uh, yeah, almost formalised. Formalised gendered violence. Sorry, yeah, I, that was almost formalised gendered violence. Well, I think that there was, the company certainly did try to formalise the gendered yes. violence. So the answer is yes, that was film and film gendered, vi gendered violence. Um, gendered violence was experienced by those workers there. Mm. Um, and what we do here at Trades Hall in all aspects, OHS, delegates, everything, is what the workers tell us, we help them mm -hmm. organise around. Yeah. And those workers were saying, we are at risk, we are in danger, we are experiencing gender violence. Um, so we help them with it. Sure. But of course, if somebody was working, there was people working in a lingerie shop who were like, we're having a great time here, of course, we wouldn't, you know, maybe sure. we'd go in there to buy a pair of underpants and that would be about it. Sure. And um, also, like... Well, actually, yeah, I just want to sort of tie this into what, what I was uh, about to go into now. So, I mean, there's no reason why people working in a lingerie shop would need to be... Like, there's not, it's not an inherent... I mean, maybe it is. A, it, it, it's a risk, but it doesn't need to be a hazard. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, there's no reason mm. why those workers should have to feel unsafe. So it's all about how uh, a company or an employer or, you know, management deal with the situations in a workplace to minimise the risks of gender gender violence, which mm. clearly Honey Burnett, Burnett were not doing in that scenario. In fact, you could argue that their response was making it worse mm. or, you know, it was actually entrenching a lot of it. But, you know, like people work in lingerie stores and that's... We don't want to eliminate underpants. We want to eliminate we are pro sexism underpants. in the workplace and risk. 
Yes, that's exactly and it. And there were things that they were able to do, you know, like such as taking away all of the guidelines that were yeah. le that left them at risk. And you can have it so that people who finish late, mm. pe that no two people, were, no single person is left sh shutting up a shop late, mm, which is a risk, you know, mm. and that if they do have to walk through a car park, that there's lighting there. Sure. You know, I mean, we all know about how to eliminate risk mm, well hopefully exactly at it. this stage and yeah. so yeah and so this goes this goes into um you know the next bit that i want to say so let's let's just let's let's just focus in on so why is this an oh ohs issue and what sort of legal for ohs framework can we locate it in right so uh let's just go back to our oh here we go we've got a nice little hierarchy that just just control. your classic hierarchy of control folks can i get i really want like an animation of like our old mate the hierarchy of controls yeah. and he's just like do, 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 do. uh got you man um so yeah everything or a, a large part of ohs uh, you know what we do here comes from Section 21 of the OHS Act, which is uh, main, uh, an employer's responsibility to provide and maintain a, uh, a working environment that is uh, safe and without risks to health. I think I got that word for word. So, um, and clearly in an, a workplace that uh, where gendered violence is uh, rife or, or allowed to occur, that's a failure on behalf of the uh, employer to, you know, provide that. So that immediately puts it in an OHS framework. That immediately says, uh, you know, this is a breach of uh, a, an employer's responsibility if they are failing to address gender violence in the workplace. Mm. Uh, and it's quite, it's, it's you know, it, it's as simple as that. Mm. And so where do you go as a, you know, uh, as an OHS rep? from there. Have you had any experience in this area from OHS reps? Yes, well the, the women's team, this is, we have actually been working with um, WorkSafe about mm -hmm. getting gendered violence recognised, yeah. which they have agreed to, okay, so great. this will be in the OHS Act. So it, it's not like great. you're going to, not you'll be able to get your act out and point to it exactly, Good. but the real task for you OHS reps is there's no point in us having it there mm -hmm. until somebody ch uses it to that's challenge right. the behaviour. That's right. Um, and that's going to be the work of our reps to do that historical yes work Absolutely. that will change it. And I think a lot of our reps uh, and pretty much anyone as an OHS rep would know that there's what the law says and then there's what happens in the workplace mm. and uh, if you know it, it, if you uh, and your um, if you and your workmates are you know it's it, it's uh, unfortunately it's a lot on you guys to sort of make sure that the employer meets those standards because a lot of employers wouldn't just be like we're going to meet these standards Mm. just out of the goodness of our heart certainly not and i'm sure like physical hazards all over it yeah. you know can i work with this cleaning chemical we can all get our hierarchy of control out and work that one out yeah um but with um you know gender violence and you know all of these sort of myriad of issues what you need to be able to work out is the underlying issues that have led to it. Yeah. You know, so we talk about the behaviours and the structures and the culture mm -hmm. that can lead to that. Yeah. Um, an example would is like a factory um, and you have a manager who is walking past, it's a bunch of migrant women in casual jobs working as line hands mm -hmm. along a factory line, right? And they are all made very, very anxious because there's a manager that sort of stands over them and rubs up against them mm. and all of that comes down from their offices. Yeah. But if you went into that space, you would see, first of all, the physical space, mm. that you have a space where somebody's able to come yes. through and walk through a line and rub up against people. Yeah. Then you also have a structure where there's a, one of those big windows up in factories that some of you may have seen mm. where the management all sit up there and they can steer down over yeah, everybody. That's it. I mean, if that's not a physical um, mm. show of where the power is, yeah, I don't know what it is. So that also leaves people vulnerable to be looked at but not be able to look. Yes. Then you also have it so that there's people in very vulnerable job on that line. Mm -hmm. So women, migrant women especially, mm -hmm. are especially vulnerable. 
um, and that um, perhaps their working status um, and their um, weaker grasp of like communication mm -hmm. uh, all leave them vulnerable. Yep. So they're at, they're at risk. Um, and so you have all men in management who mm. maybe, and that in themselves kind of creates this culture where the men are more important in that mm -hmm. workplace. They have yeah. more power yeah, of course. and their entitlement to that workplace, it's, it's off. So mm -hmm. if you walked in there, you could probably, as an OHS rep, and someone said, hey, this guy's rubbed up against me. One thing you could do is go, oh, I'll grab the delegate. That was Steve who did it. We'll try and prove it. We'll see if we'll get some witnesses and Steve's fired. Yeah. But after Steve's gone, you've still got the same problem course, in there. absolutely. Don't you? Yeah. So, like, you, you would need to recognise that there were structures in there. It was the way people were working. It was the power imbalance. It was the idea that somebody, that maybe people were seeing the way Steve's behaving or whatever and mm, nobody's and saying was, anything yeah. because... And then maybe there's people with casual jobs who are worried about losing those. Sure. And then maybe there's, you know. And there was no avenues for, you know, reporting incidences and, and things. And, like you, that. and you grab their EBA and there's no clauses that represent, um, you know, like you don't have a gender violence clause. You mm -hmm. don't have anything that, uh, you don't have any policy. I mean, yeah, sure. not that I'm a great believer in policy. I'm sure all of you out there realise that a lot of the time policy is as good as writing it on a bar napkin um, but <laughs> but you know what I mean yeah, like yeah, you at least want to be able to look at that stuff and see culturally what's happening in that workplace yes of course um, and that's what's going to be the task for OHS reps mm -hmm. they're going to have to recognize when there's a difference between when there's just somebody in a workplace that's maybe a bad apple and mm -hmm. when there's actually a problem of gender violence in that workplace yeah Absolutely. Mm. Um, and uh, from there, once that sort of, once those problems, uh, you know, have been recognised, and mm. um, once they're sort of uh, have been identified by the OHS rep, mm. um, from there, it's really a matter of. Oh, we've got another question. Yeah. So finish that thought. I was just going to say, it really can be a matter of going back to your um, sort of tried and true OHS rep. Um, you know strategies for dealing with issues so you know issuing pins yep. um consultation the your your right to consultation with your employer um you know cease works um all of these sorts of things that you are you are uh familiar with and like the ways that you would address uh it's a exactly physical the, it's exactly the same concept yes absolutely yep. so it's you know there's not uh, you know at the end of i mean yet during the process you need to maybe think about it in terms of uh you know, it's not like a piece of machinery in that you can't just get rid of it. Mm. Uh, you know, you do need to think about the underlying underlying causes through that yeah. process. But it's once, psychosocial, it's not yeah. physical. You yes, know, that's like right. But the then time. once the mm. um, once the hazard has been identified, then from then on, it can really just be treated like any other OHS problem. We've got this hazard. We've identified it. Um, you know, uh, as an OHS rep, the management has a duty to consult with you. And if they don't, then um, you know, there's you can put a pin on them not consulting with you. Uh, you can put a pin on uh, if they fail to consult with you. Um, and then there's a bunch of things that um, you know with, that we've mm. uh, talked about. Yeah. Um, that you know, just the, the the greatest hits of the OHS rep. What's our question? Crazy? Yeah. Uh, so we've got a question coming in from the chat. Um, this is just, I was asking for a specific examples um, and someone's given us one here. Um, so a young apprentice in a very macho environment, uh, he is not macho, may not, and then in brackets, but not declared, identify as straight. So we may or may, he doesn't identify as straight, but it's not declared. Uh, the person is relentlessly teased, jokes at his expense, etc. Is this gendered violence? One hundred percent. That is like, you get a textbook, you open it up. That's your example. Mm -hmm. um, and again, a, a, in that instance, a, a, it's not just gendered violence. In that, an apprentice is particularly vulnerable in a workplace. Mm. On top of it, yes. Um, so there's like, again, we're seeing more of what it is in terms of the structure mm -hmm. and the culture that allows for it. Because maybe if this person who's being gendered, have, having gendered violence perpetrated against them, if they were um, in a managerial position or if they were the leading you know, That's leading right. hand or whatever, they yeah. would, maybe would it be in that position? The, or The CEO doesn't get bullied for being a little bit effeminate. Yeah. 
but the apprentice does because of that power imbalance. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is there's a power imbalance there, and it's um, absolutely because of the fact that they're not conforming to a gender. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, if the additional question is what you can do about that, then there are things that you can do about it in terms of being an OHS rep. You know, you have your choice about whether you want to go to your delegate and industrially organise around it, and like that. But then there's also the OHS one, which is to say, we're I'm in a position here. I don't know the workplace, but whatever the confounding things may be, that you have a manager in there who is, has the ability to do that. Mm. You know, so if you have an OHS rep, they certainly should consult with can, can consult with management about the fact that there is um, gender violence behaving uh, happening in your workplace because because of that structure perhaps. Mm. Or maybe it could be that you're left alone with this person or you're just working alone with this person. I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but cool. I definitely think it's worth talking to your delegate or your OHS rep about. Yes, absolutely. So it's, uh, yeah, short mm. answer is yes, that is 100% gender violence and um, yeah, mm. talk to somebody about it. And yeah. And always, uh, one thing that we've, uh, uh, it's sort of for a lot of these psychosocial uh, issues in the workplace, uh, just a really basic thing that you can do is always just keep a record. That's just a really mm. like bread and butter thing. Just always keep a record. When anybody reports something or when something happens to you, keep a record because those are the things that are going to come in handy later of you know recorded incidences mm. of, um, of yep. violence. Or and for sure, I do understand, especially like in really highly masculine industries like steel workers, construction workers and all of that stuff in Australia, that a lot of the time going and actually lodging a harassment complaint mm. can be a very daunting Absolutely. and for good reason a daunting thing to partake in. No, because it's not um, made easy for people. No, it's not. And so touch one, touch all. It's it, There's a reason we say that and mm. that is Absolutely. if that's happening to you, then it's happening to everyone in that that's workplace. Right. And all of your workmates should be able to, you know, um, rally behind you with that. Mm. And if you don't want to make an individual case, then I'm sure um, you could get together with reps or delegates or an organiser and, and work out a way about trying to change that culture yeah. and putting in place ways of changing that workplace that don't make it about you specifically. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. All right. But um, if we don't know. Well, I mean, I'm sure well, there's yeah. more to the story. But Absolutely. But definitely and, uh, you should yeah. know that it's not right and that... There are ways of changing it. Yeah, and feel free to you know get in contact with us if you need some mm. further assistance or want to clarify anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, Sam, we got anything else? People, I think we've sort of maybe covered a lot of the things we need to cover. Yeah, nothing else coming in right now. So we've got a few people watching. So if you've got any extra questions, now's the time to pop them in. Yeah. Um, or just right. let us know if you have a better understanding of gendered violence than you did mm. before. I think that was kind of just the goal of this one, is yes, to get absolutely. people started on this kind of path. Absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, one thing, uh, this is going to be something that we're going to be sort of pursuing pretty hard this year, I think, um, or, you know, going into the future as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, we're definitely uh, keen to hear people's experiences or you know pe what people think of the issue um, and how you know how they might have addressed it as an OHS rep or how they might experience it in their workplace. Um, yeah, because it's going to be a, a big thing and is all, well, it's already a big thing. Yeah, and, uh, we want to really be on the forefront of addressing this as a this problem in the workplaces. Yeah, it's an important part of history. I think what we're doing here, mm. and it's great the women's team working with the OHS team. Um, we're trying to get some refresh, refreshers together for you lot so you mm -hmm. can come off on your one day is to do mm -hmm. it. Yep. And um, we've done a pilot, maybe doing a second pilot coming up soon, hopefully, yep. um, to try and get it off the ground. Because I think if we can do this, it's going to address some of these underlying problems. One of, you know, the key thing I think that a lot of people I hear that experience gender violence walk away from a job or walk away from their work day feeling like hell and not really being able to put their finger on it, you know? Mm. Um, and and we want to be able to help not just those people, but OHS reps turn around and go, all right, let's try and change some of these underlying culture that's creating harm, which is psychological and of course physical as well, um, for, so that everybody can come to work safe and happy. Absolutely. Rosie jumped in in the comments and just said, great to hear from you, Harriet. So, some positive reception. Rosie. Our trainer, Rosie. Oh, oh. Rose. Oh. Yes. 
It's uh, sister to sister support. We love that here. That's right. At we are women, un union women. All right. Well, mm. yeah. I mean, if there's nothing else that you want to add, anything else we haven't covered, or um, let me just have a little tiny looky. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I would say is if you are interested in this subject, yeah, is something that maybe you think you want to find out more about, like how is a health and safety rep? What you do when someone actually mm. like that question that came up. Your apprentice comes up and says, "I think that." You know, people were like giving me a hard time because of this issue because I'm not conforming and, um, you know, I'm not interested in the AFL and all the other I'm stuff. I'm personally not interested in AFL. I'll say that out loud. I support Collingwood, but it doesn't mean you should log off. I love wrestling. Um, <laughs> do you? Yeah. <laughs> Justice for Kofi Kingston, everybody. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I like WWE. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wrestling. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Not real wrestling. No, not like Greco-Roman wrestling. No, I don't think there's I'm much kind of into that. I mean, it, it's cool it's when, when it's on the Olympics, but I yeah. don't think there's really... It's never really on TV outside of every four Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Oh. Yeah. That's some grappling. That that's some YouTube. grappling. That's some grappling. Love a, love a good grapple. <laughs> yeah. Love a good grapple. Um, yeah, so if you want to start thinking more about some really tangent things, like the do's and don'ts about what to do if somebody comes up... To you and has an issue with gender violence about um, how we go underneath the actual incident and start working out how we can change all of the stuff underneath it um, you know we could it does take a couple of days to get to the bottom of it but mm. by the end of it it's like a great experience so mm -hmm. the 24th 25th of March I think is is when we have it it's just going to be here at Trades Hall so if any OHS reps out there mm -hmm. on the world in the in the computer in the computer <laughs> would like to come yeah all right then you're cool. welcome well that's a good 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 plug mm. uh, I believe you've also you brought a clip of a of the, of the movie that you were recently starred in and get that up on <laughs> no oh, sorry <laughs> there's no clip that's my, that's, <laughs> what my, movie? that's my Jimmy Fallon bit it's like we come here with a uh, yeah. of like thing that you've recently done yeah uh, anyway I'm like I'll be on tour uh, yeah what are your tour playing, dates uh, MCG I I to play. I'm just like a baby falling in a lake. Or <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Well, look, this conversation is clearly falling apart. <laughs> um, so thank I think you, we might comrade. leave it there. Thank you very much, Harriet, for coming in and joining us. Um, thank you, Sam, on the, yeah. uh, the old tech desk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll, thanks, safety boys. No worries. We'll catch you guys next time in, uh, in April, I think. In the computer. In the computer. <laughs>